Hey, does your credit suck? Do you need some dings removed? Well, my buddy has a company to help fix your credit. Bridge Credit Solutions is different. They are backed with a 100% money back guarantee for any items that cannot be removed. You'll not find that anywhere in the credit repair industry. You'll know exactly what you're paying for at the beginning of the repair, no open-ended monthly fees, and it's written in the contract what work is to be done and how much you're paying. You need that Bridge Report access prior to scheduling your audit. They can't go over your credit report without this. It costs just $1. This can be found on the website by simply clicking on the services drop-down bar where you'll see Bridge Report access. Bridge Credit Solutions prides itself on lightning quick turnaround time. They will guarantee removal of certain negative items in as quick as 24 hours. And they don't just stop at credit repair. They specialize in helping you with other financial needs once your credit is repaired, such as 0% APR loans, business loans, financial counseling, credit monitoring, and debt settlement. And finally, they're personable. They take communication seriously. Always feel free to call or text no matter the hour with whatever questions or concerns that you may have. Go to bridgecreditsolutions.com slash sacks or call or text 212-660-2991. Bridgecreditsolutions.com com slash sacks fix your credit yesterday we have a very special episode today with my pal man and matthews that we're going to get to here in a moment we had a great conversation she called in remotely we had some great riffs we had some great stories uh she's got a book out that you guys should check out and you should check out her instagram and different social media accounts Always hilarious, always funny. Go to my merch store at jeremiahwatkins.com. There's new shirts up. There's some saxophone hats, all that good stuff. And I want to thank Betterbox and Speedweed for always coming through on the studio side of things. And my producer, Gage T. Arena, behind the glass over there. Follow him on social media. Uh, I'm not on tour for the moment, guys. I'll let you know when there's more dates up. But there's a lot of stand-up videos out. If you enjoy eating breakfast with Jeremiah, there's those on my YouTube that you can catch up on, as well as my Instagram and stuff like that. I love you guys. All the liking and commenting and reviewing on iTunes, all that stuff helps with the numbers, and I appreciate you guys doing that. And reach out to my guests and send them positive vibes and positive reviews. That helps me get more and better guests in the future. Without further ado, please welcome my pal, Man and Matthews, to Jeremiah Wonders. I've had co- I have to drink coffee, but when I drink too much, it's, I don't even know if it affects me anymore. Anyway, we can we can get we can talk about it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> save it, save it, save it for the show. We gotta save this for the show. We gotta start oh with this God. coffee talk. We have Man and Matthews on the show right here, right now. And Jeremiah wonders. I'm very glad that you were uh, able to join me remotely today. How the heck are you doing, pal? I'm good. I woke up with a temperature. <laughs> I know I wasn't so going to bring COVID. it up, but but you but you mentioned it, so let's talk about it. Uh, yeah, we're you're well, going to come in person. There. Yeah, yeah. I really want to be there in person because I want to be around another human being, especially like a newer energy. Like I love that stuff, but I also want to be considerate of your health. No, I I do appreciate that. I mean, like I was bummed when, when I read your message, but I was also like. This is pretty thoughtful and considerate that she gave me a heads up that you didn't try to power through. You know what I mean? So, yeah, normally I would, but under the circumstances of the pandemic, I was like, there is a chance that over the, <laughs> I could have caught, you know what I mean? Like, I have to be so much more aware. And I probably don't have it or anything like that, but I did yeah. spend the whole night sweating <laughs> it out. <laughs> so yeah, it it's probably brings, come and gone. It's a whole new meaning to the the term viral comedian now when we're doing these weird podcasts and stuff. So <laughs> Hey, we're getting started on this thing. Let's do this. <laughs> well, so. thank you for having me. Of course, I uh, I was actually um, I was uh, I was doing a little bit of my research on you. I try to do that for my guests and and friends that I don't know stuff about sometimes. And uh, I actually was not aware that you recently put out a book. Yeah, I wrote a book. That's so cool. Thank you. It's called Funny How It Works Out, and it's about my life and uh, social media and growing up and addiction and heartbreak because I was married and now I'm getting divorced all within a year. And that that's kind of what propelled this, the, the writing of the book that I started sure. writing this year. How long were you two yeah. together before uh, things started to get a little shaky? Uh, well, I didn't know they were shaky. <laughs> so I was completely like, Oh, Oh, we're not okay. Oh, okay. Um, but we got, we, we met in um, 2017 Mm-hmm. Got engaged after four months, got married 
And then a, a month after the wedding, I was revealed some information that I was Mary's pathological liar and perhaps psychopath. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. I don't use these worms, <laughs> these worms, these worms. <laughs> I don't use these worms slightly. <laughs> I don't use them easily, <laughs> slightly, any of that. I don't use worms very often, but for here on the show today, yes. Yeah, it was just such an, it was the, it was the, the biggest thing that had ever happened to me, the biggest blind side, the biggest flip. Like, you know, when you know your reality and then all of a sudden everything feels completely flipped and my whole body just like, was confused. It would be like if someone just told you, Hey, you're, I hate to be rude about like, this is sad, but like what went through my mind when they were telling me this is like, Oh my God, the people closest to me have all died. Like what that would feel like. Yeah. was just completely shattered. Sure. Reality. It was bizarre. Anyway. Um, that was like a year. That was a year ago. A year ago. So I'm sure this last year has just been kind of like a lot of reflection and healing and just trying to get over that because that's a big life event. You think, you know, your life is headed in a certain direction, especially when, uh, you're committing to somebody like marriage. And then, you know, you find stuff out about that, uh, other person that's not exactly where it was. And then you kind of, I'm sure start getting in your head and reevaluating a lot of things within your life. Yeah. And reevaluating reevaluating a lot of things about myself and where, you know, my part, because what didn't I see? And it's not like, you know, you know, there's a cliche of when a girl's dating a guy and everyone around her's like, dude, no, he's bad news. And they're like, she's like, just shut up. I'm going to do it anyway. This was like, not that this was, everybody was obsessed with him and was like, you met your, perfect match he loves you he adores and just see it and like just reinforce 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 the wedding was beautiful there was no part of me that was like i know what's coming it was like yeah there wasn't any that, like, that's why like it was such a hard clues hit. or anything that like would occasionally catch you off guard is just like a straight like blow like where did, where's this even coming from kind of thing yeah absolutely so it's definitely been a year of healing and growing and looking at, you know, and obviously writing my book, which I'm, I'm really glad that, I mean, I hate to say that, um, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody, but what it's done is opened up a new space in me that is more, um, vulnerable and compassionate and understanding of this type of thing that I didn't, wasn't really on my radar before, you know, I would Mm -hmm. hear women be like, or people be like, oh, he cheated or had an affair. And it would kind of go over my head a little bit. And I, I wasn't really that compassionate because I couldn't really relate, I guess. And now I have a whole new way to relate to people. And the more I'm talking about it, the more other people are identifying and feeling connected. And it's wonderful. It's actually been a a huge, beautiful experience. Yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of people reaching out and stuff that are like, I'm relating to this so hard. Thank you for writing about this because it's not, you know, stuff like that is not an easy subject to talk about, let alone sit down and write about and be like, hey, I'm opening myself up to you in a way that like is in a long form version where you can really, you know, relate to me if this is something that's happened to you in your life. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. There's all the voices that come in. They're like, don't do it. Nobody cares. What what will he think? What will his people think? What are you going to be seen as? Oh, like all this, all the fear that kind of can get in the way of the creative process, which I'm sure you as a comedian know so much about, like we get in our own way and our job is to just kind of do it anyway, or to make the fool out of ourselves. And yeah, it's, it's been, it's been crazy. This past year has been insane. The amount of times where I can look back at some moments in my career where I didn't trust my gut and I regret it, like that has happened so many times where I'm like, why didn't I just stick with what I knew was the right thing to do? I start second guessing and, you know, being influenced by outside things of, or expectations or wants maybe of other people or what I thought people might want from me. And anytime I've followed my gut, that's when it leads to other things and opens doors and, and places where the direction that I want to be headed. 
but it's it's a it's hard thing to do to 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 repeatedly be like nope i know what's best like let me let me do this yeah it's easy to do that when you're you know probably i don't know about you but i was an only child so i grew up in my room and kind of just trusting my gut and trusting my instinct i didn't have outside sources to necessarily be like don't do that do that i mean of course i had parents who were basically just like you're great and whatever but as we get older and as especially going up on stage, it's really hard not to listen to where the laughs are and take other people's opinions and projections and other comedians, you know, advice and stuff. But that is exactly what I feel like this journey has been this last year for me. I don't necessarily write a ton of this in the book. What I write in the book is basically like, may I not close my heart because of another man's pain? Because a lot of women will generalize and they'll be like, oh, well, see, I cheated. All men are cheaters. And then they never go back out there again. And they never allow themselves to feel that love again. And that's the biggest shame of it all. And so that's what I write about. But for me personally, the biggest lesson was to follow my gut, like listen. And now that in hindsight, I can look back. Hmm. I didn't set boundaries here. I did kind of invite him into my life too easily. And I, you know, when that felt weird to me, I didn't confront him with that. Like I can in hindsight, see the places that I didn't follow my gut. And so, you know, it's a huge lesson for me as well, not just him. Jeremiah Wonders is brought to you by Talkspace.com. Change is constant, and these days there's something new and unprecedented to grapple with every single day. It's a lot. You got to talk it out with someone. And Talkspace is on a mission to make therapy affordable and accessible for us all. Even I've been to couples therapy with my wife, and I got to say, it is extremely worthwhile. Therapy should not have a stigma behind it. It works, and Talkspace is what we all need right now. Online therapy. They'll match you with a licensed therapist who you can reach out to 24-7. That's right, whenever something's on your mind, you can text them. Get daily responses five days a week. And there are other benefits to online therapy. It's affordable. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. One month on Talkspace costs about the same as a single in-person appointment. And once you're in their network, you will have access to thousands of therapists. They have experience treating a range of issues, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, relationships, food, and more. We all need someone to talk to, and Talkspace wants to give us the license support we deserve at a price we can afford. Match with your perfect therapist at Talkspace.com or by downloading the app. Get $100 off your first month with code SAX. That's code SAX to get $100 off your first month at Talkspace.com. 2020 has been uh, an interesting year for all of us. <laughs> you know what, though? I will say this is a good time for this to happen to you of all the times because Everybody is going through not this, but they're going through weird things in general where it's like, okay, at least other people, we're all in this together in some weird way at least. You know what I mean? If this would have happened, you know, a few years back or whatever, like comedy and everything was really at the top. Literally the last couple of years, it was insane to look at the clubs and just how many opportunities are were just going on and everything. And it just hit, has, you know, hit a little bit of a slump this year. So it's at least good that, you know, I guess you're on the same wavelength as everybody else right now, which is good. That's, that's how I look totally. at things. I'm like, oh, you got to find a positive in it some way. Yeah. Oh, and I totally have. I look at how I have all this time and space to kind of just be with myself rather than avoid and try to like push it aside. And because I do, I know everyone's going through it. Are you still able to perform? Because I so, haven't performed at all. Um, yeah. When was the last time that you performed? Oh, my God. Uh, in Washington, DC in February. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was fortunate to, I, I went back on the road for three weekends in a row this last month. I was out, like I was out and, uh, there were socially distanced shows inside and, uh, I felt safe. Were people I, wearing I, masks? Like what was not, that like? It was interesting because it was, uh, you feel when you're going out because we've been inside for so long, you literally feel like am I doing something wrong right now? Like, like your brain is like, kind of like, should I be going out? You're, you know, you're second guessing everything. And I was just super clean and kept hand sanitizing, wore my mask, uh, when I wasn't on stage, uh, everywhere and didn't do a meet and greet afterwards to kind of cut down on interaction. Cause that's, I feel like that's how you're going to get it if you're on the road and really, you know, meeting people after the show and stuff. So I did like a a Q and a thing in its place, which was like fun, but awkward in some ways, <laughs> like towards the end I said, I'm like, hey, anybody have a question for me? I never do this, but, uh, I don't, I'm not going to be able to talk to you after the show. So, uh, if you have anything that you're planning on asking me, like, let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, totally. But it was, uh, 
it was good. It felt really good to be back out on the road. Um, people were not wearing masks where they were seated, but they were socially distanced in the room from the stage and from each other, uh, which some comedians are still freaked out by. I'm, I'm on the level where I have been following all the stuff and I I'm taking the precautions on the backside where I wasn't doing the meet and greet. So I was like, I think I'll be okay. Like I, I was like, I think I'll be fine. And luckily, you know, I came back and tested negative and it was a, it was good. It was amazing just to be back out on the road and doing shows. And I just tried to film like every show because I was like, I don't know the next time I'm going to be back out here. So I might as well try to get some clips and stuff from this, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'd be too. I think I'd be too. I have been too afraid to do that. So good on you. And I feel like, was it different like to have, because there's probably obviously less people. It's, Does that make it's, a difference They're to you way harder shows. They're way harder yeah. shows. Because, you know, uh, as, as we both know, it's like the bigger the crowd, the easier the show is. Like, so mm -hmm. when you take all that down and shrink it down, you really feel like after you're done with a bit or a story or something, you feel like when those laughs come to an end, you're like, huh, I got to really get to this next bit. There's like nothing to pad the laughter between the sets because there's just yeah. so many less people. Uh, so it, but it was one of those things where I've, I have done late night sets for so many years, like at the comedy store in different places where it didn't shake me necessarily just because I'm so used to performing for like five to 10 people at, one thirty, two 2 o'clock in the morning. So luckily I had like the steps taken and, and, you know, the work done ahead of time where it, it, I wasn't freaking out at all the shows. Cause I did one of the shows, I did an hour, my first show back. I was like, I hope this isn't the show. What is like, there was eight people in the crowd. There's eight people in the crowd. It was one of their first weeks open back as a club. A lot of people didn't even know that it was back open yet. And people were nervous to come out even as audience members. So I had to do my first hour in five months for eight people. And that set was really hard because it was like, I'm trying, I'm tripping over oh. my words. I'm trying to get through it and stuff. And they know what's going on. You know, they know that like they haven't seen comedy in a long time. They know I haven't done it in a long time. <laughs> like I'm being very truthful and honest with them. And it ended up being a good show, but it was, oof. It'll be a, a one. I'll never forget that show. It's just like, oh man. Yeah, you've been doing comedy. I remember you from like years and years, at least eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. We've been. Yeah, I mean, how long have you been? Like loosely through the scene, like like we had like the same for years. We had like the same GFL showcase. Um, yeah, I yeah. remember that a couple, even a couple of years back. Where, yeah, yeah, I remember that at the at the comedy store. Yeah, we were like in the belly room. We had. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we had uh, our showcase that that night together. Uh, I've been in the scene for like, um, I've been doing stand-up over 10 years now, and I've lived in L.A. for over 11 years now. Um, but I have a similar wow. background, I think, to you. You did like some Second City and some Groundlings, right? Yeah. Yeah. I did was that your, first. That's how, that's exact to me. I, I was doing the improv stuff first and then kind of worked my way over to the stand-up side of thing. And you did the whole conservatory program at Second City and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe I recognize you from there too. I had it's possible. Um, yeah, who were some of your teachers yeah. at the time? Because I was there I had from Matt Craig. Yep, I was there from literally 2009 to 2011, like ish. So we I think probably I started in 2010. I had Matt Craig as my first teacher. Then I had Jamie Moyer and Ithamar Enriquez and oh, Frank Cayetti. I all literally the good, had all, all those the teachers. Greats. <laughs> they're they're I mean, so good. They're so good for people who don't know those people you got to look them up they're all working in different tv in various forms but i mean they're all like second city like main stage performers and they're so good at what they do so yeah, i'm sure learn. i probably saw you it's so funny yeah. i probably saw you there and we probably just didn't know each other at the time and then our paths kind of cross organically more through stand-up i don't know i think so too um I think it was like, I look back because I've had many teachers since then. And I'm like, oh, the, those particularly are such good, funny humans that I'm so grateful that I got to learn from. Because it's really one, it's one thing to learn from people that you're like, you laugh at. Like when they would stand up and, and kind of act something else real quick. And I would laugh. I'm like, oh, I want to learn from someone I laugh at where I've had other teachers that like don't want to be there. They're not that funny in class. They're, they don't perform well on stage and it's it's harder to 
hear them. So I feel like I, I just feel really grateful that that was my first kind of real improv experience was that like Second City was like the time to remember, at least one of the times to remember for me. Yeah. Oh, it's a big I mean, that's where I uh, uh, I met my wife was at Second City L.A. I was wow. literally I like was super new to L.A. We were friends for a while before uh, just literally she was in my improv class. She had a boyfriend at the time. I've never been the kind of guy to try to swoop in on other people's <laughs> relationships. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So I just kind of let, I'm like, it'll fizzle eventually. Like, really I'm just like, it, I don't, I'm just going to let it fizzle. And uh, so when she, I found out she didn't have a boyfriend, I was like, I hit her up like on Facebook Messenger, like, hey, we should hang out sometime. Oh, and, then, and yeah. that's nice that you waited because then you were probably able to build. I mean, were you friends before that? We were friends before that. Yeah. And then yeah, it was, which is good. It's like good to kind of build that first. Yeah. Then, Cause you kind of know the person and then it's like, yeah, you yeah. build on it from there. But yeah, I, I have a lot of fun memories of, yeah, really solid people that I, uh, one of my roommates, uh, I met there, like he moved in, like after we were taking classes at second city. So I was like, so like, I was a second city and improv like nerd. I would go and see all those shows with like Matt Craig and, Frank Coyote and Ithamar and just to see, and Jamie, like it was so cool. And also just to see, uh, like, I don't know if you, you were around when Keegan Michael Key used to perform there, like all the time before Key and Peele came out, but I used to really, like, I, I, yeah, I think I've seen a couple. Cause I remember when that show came out, I was like, Oh, I know him. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I know that guy. There's, there's is... a... <laughs> but you don't, but like, yeah, yeah. I must have recognized him from the stage or whatever. Yeah. Like I it's saw really, a, yeah. a $1 show for my, with my student ID <laughs> and saw him for a dollar. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And now he's everywhere. I know. Like all the, I mean, all the people there, are, it's like inevitable for, I mean, if you keep going and if you like, it good. really is. If you, if you're good <laughs> and you stick through it, I mean, it may take longer than some of us would like, but it's it's one of those things where it, it's slowly the cream will rise after a while. Did you do UCB or Groundlings or iOS? I did Groundlings. Uh, I did I did tons of shows at iOS, and it was it's so funny. I inherited multiple shows at iOS because they thought because I was I hung out there and did so many shows. They literally thought that I was a student who took classes there. So they kept giving me my own show. They literally were like, oh, well, this guy takes classes. They never found out that I didn't take classes. And they kept giving oh me God. new hours. They're like, yeah, Jeremiah, yeah, we'll give him a show. It's like, he's always around. So just you or like a group? Me and a couple of buddies. We had like, uh, like I was on a couple of different improv teams and we kept being given blocks of time. Where they're like, hey, uh, so does Jeremiah want to take this over? Or does Jeremiah and Justin want to take this hour over? And I ran stand-up shows there and improv shows there for years. And we oh book improv God. teams. We book stand-ups. And that's how I cut my teeth. Like, I'd, th Those were some of the first early longer sets I'd do. I'd do like 15, 20 minutes of stand-up uh, sets like on a Saturday night like in that little upstairs space like for seven, eight people. But you couldn't find that long of stage time anywhere else. So we'd book like three or four improv teams. And then me and Justin Alexio, we'd do like some sets and we'd be like, great. That's, that's the show. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's you own the, you own that place without ever going there. It was, a student. It was yeah. Did you like groundlings? Did you have a good experience at groundlings? I did. I loved it. It was, it was after second city and I love doing characters. And so I felt like it was, yeah. And um, I liked the teachers more at Second City, but I did mm -hmm. not like the teachers at Ground. There was one teacher that I didn't love at Groundlings for. I'm not going to say which class, but she was. She, I cried in the class on stage I've... after doing one of my characters. She <sighs> was basically like, "Are you having fun?" And I wasn't. And she like found out like this was like deeper in the program, and it was <laughs> like, and I was I I used to, I. Doesn't matter. I wasn't eating a ton because I was having a, what they call flare up in the gut. And so I was weak and I wasn't having fun. So she like called, but, but I made it mean that I just suck. And then I started crying and that was my groundlings experience. But the beginning of groundlings was just like, I loved it. I loved it. How loved far it. did, how far did you so go? Fun. Because I only went to, I got on the waiting list for writing lab, but by the time that they finally called me for writing lab, my stand-up schedule, 
I was like starting to tour and stuff and I couldn't find, you had to commit like two days a week and they were like Wednesdays and Saturdays. And I'm like, I'm gone like every Saturday right now. And they're like, well, you can only miss two. And I was like, oh, well, I, I can't, I can't do this. Um, did you, did you, how far did you go with it? Writing lab. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I did writing lab, um, three years after I'd finished intermediate, which was a mistake. Oh, gotcha. It had been three years. So like Vine took off for me. And then I was like, I don't need classes. <laughs> no, I like love classes. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm be so busy. Not sure. that I don't need it because I love classes because I had already done the whole two year Second City program and then Groundlings. But then you take the break. And I think I, my ego was so like scared to be a student again because I had had all this success and millions of followers on the Vine app and social media that I was like, okay, but I, I knew, I knew in my soul, like I need to learn more and grow because I'm, I'm plateauing here. And so I took a class and I, I took writing lab, which is not a good dipping back in to the scene. It's such an intense, it What's can be an intense, depending on the teacher, it can be a very intense experience, like you said, twice a week. And then there's that show where they make or break whether you get to keep going. And it's like the stakes are so high. And so it wasn't the best class for me to get back into classes. Yeah, it's really. it's highly, highly competitive for people who uh, are kind of tuning into this that are wondering, like, how, basically how I kind of compare it is like, uh, if you can make it through Groundlings... Um, you know, a lot of those people, that's, that's where, uh, if you don't know, they, they scout for Saturday night live and different sketch shows and stuff like that. And, um, I only know a couple people who have finished the groundlings program, like Leonard Robinson, he finished the groundlings program and he's a paid regular at the comedy store. Those are two of the hardest things to do in comedy. Like it took me a long time to become a paid regular at the comedy store and, to do have both of those, it's like a crazy feat and like just shows like what kind of work ethic it takes to do something like that. Cause both of them take a ton of commitment and a ton of years. Um, but I the the show I went and saw his show, uh, and he um and Chloe, who's on um SNL now, she was in that cast. She was in my writing lab. She was. Okay. Yeah, she's, she, she was she, we were in the same writing lab class, the one that I hated. <laughs> but yeah. she shined, obviously. She's sure. on SNL. <laughs> yeah, she's great. <laughs> yeah, sorry. She was when, on the show with your... No, that's... Yeah, yeah. She was She was on the show with uh, uh, with my buddy Leonard. And, and it was clear... Like, when I watched her on the show, I was like, oh, this girl's great. And uh, I had known her from... I had actually met her, I think, at JFL the same year that we were out there. Um, when I was you out were there doing... on the digital one. Yeah, you were out there. All three must have been out there. Yeah, so I was uh, I was but out she, there that year uh, for stand up, and then you were on the digital side, and I, yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> did you have fun there? I did, but you know what's funny? I don't know. Like, I'm curious. I don't know what your experience was there. I literally people. I had people coming up to me saying like that their my set blew them away. Blah blah blah. Um. And everything, and I'm sure that behind closed doors or whatever, maybe it did something for my career. But I like got multiple write ups on how good my set was, like all like great reviews. And I didn't see, I don't, I didn't see much of a like bump from it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't take meetings afterwards or anything. And I was like, this is so bizarre. Like it was one of those things yeah. where for me personally, it didn't sometimes like people get like a lot of offers or they get like a lot of meetings stuff from it. And it was just kind of like, no, we like that guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. <laughs> and I was like, everybody yeah. said it was just a weird like kind of thing. Yeah. JF just for laughs is like the most, one of the most prestigious things in comedy that you can be a part of for those. Of, I'm sure people know that because they're listening to your podcast, but yeah, I, I had a similar experience where it was just like, I stood out from the other. We got to like come on stage, and because I do stand up too, like a lot of the digital creators are like, I've never been on stage, and so I came out yeah, there like dancing and, and like, what's up? All right, I also own the stage, Fireworks. not just the digital platforms. Yeah, <laughs> and so people were like, 
I mean, I had a swarm around me after. They were like, we're from Snapchat. We'd like to talk about this agency. Like, I was just like, oh, everything's just as it should be. I finally am going to make it. And then, and I'm like, wait, nothing happened. What the hell? Okay, yeah, I guess it, that was a cool experience. Yeah, it was a great experience for sure. It, yeah, I don't know. It was know. a good ego boost to be like, I was part of, I mean, it would have been better for me. It's a fun little way to be I... like, but you know what's funny though is like, what's so funny about those festivals is like, now, like, you know, your career is continuing to take off all and all and more and more all the time. It's one of those things where, let's say you do like a huge movie or something, they're going to be like, Man and Matthews, JFL, you know, alumnus. Like, if they love like claiming it after, and you're like, well, not a whole lot happened while I was there. Yeah, this has nothing to do with you guys, but <laughs> thanks for taking the credit. Totally. Yeah, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's linked. I don't know. Maybe people. Yeah, maybe hot, we. Maybe it's stuff that behind. And they go, oh, well, okay. Maybe it's, who yeah, we knows? never know maybe, what's going on. We never know if somebody saw us like years ago, and they're like, like the like my agent and manager who I'm working with now. They literally mentioned shows to me from like five or six years ago, and they're like, "We've been watching you for a while." I'm like, "What? You, there was people there? You know what I mean? Like you just don't know." <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, I, I get it. You, especially online, digitally, like you never know. Who's you don't know who's viewing your stuff. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Anybody can be watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I, right I no. just recently downloaded a, an unfollow or remove app because I want to, I'm trying to remove ghost followers. Oh, you know yeah. anything about this? No, but that's oh, it's really the worst. interesting. I, yeah, because it messages, it messages, messages. I, I've lost the ability to speak during this whole lockdown because I don't, I don't talk to anybody. It's okay. So I like, forgot we're, how words are supposed to come out. We're putting the training wheels back on, you know, <laughs> it's the, the, the sky's on fire yeah. today. Things are good. Yeah. I, for, I, oh, it messes with the engagement when you have like a high following, but like, you know, a bunch of them are just not active or. Ghost followers, I think, means um, people that like bot guess, accounts bot and stuff robots. like that. Yeah. yeah, which happens. Like if you look at apparently, if you look at like any of the people that have millions, you can usually just cut it in half, and that's actually how much they have. Because yeah. they're just they're like, I thought this app was going to uh, magically take away a hundred thousand followers of just like who because I don't I want my engagement to to skyrocket or to get better at least. Um, but it actually just took not bots, but real people that were following me. And now I go to their pages and they're not following me. I'm like, oh, geez. I, so this app did not work. <laughs> it just had regular people. <laughs> and now, I, now I feel so weird to be like, hey, I know that you were following me, but but you're not anymore. That's you're not like, your fault. That's baby, come my back. fault. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's been a weird 24 hours. Yeah, that's weird because I I mean I notice like on my stuff like I you know I have like a a little bit of a following but it's like the 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 numbers don't match up the likes don't match up with it's just weird like how and then I'll like and I don't know what this is I have a couple of gay buddies who they've got really not a ton of followers but their engagement is like 90 percent uh do you know what i mean like it's like yeah. crazy and i don't know if that's just more of like a supportive community to like to people who are following <laughs> like I, yeah. I have no idea like maybe you know maybe people are tired of these straight white males <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, i think I guess, they are <laughs> i've heard that we're not very popular anymore i don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean do they do you write back to your people uh yeah i'm good about commenting and stuff like that like replying like oh uh, it could be the algorithm yeah. Like once, a, once you even search a person, then they're always going to kind of go to the top of your feed, I think. And so maybe those gay people are they're very heavily searching. liked even just one time. Huh. Even if, yeah, I don't know. And they're, that community, I'm sure, is way more supportive than yeah. the comedy than the, community. Than, than the comedy no. community. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the least supportive. <laughs> you got what show? You got yeah. one show? Oh, that's cool. Great, great, great. Manon, great. Con congratulations. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> no, that must feel really good. I, I how long have this... you been in the game? How long? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, how long? <laughs> Who did you? I, I have this character named uh, Becca that I do that is a, um, 
it's a bachelorette uh, who is always is basically always the bridesmaid, never the bride. And she's like, uh, "You're how long did you two know each other? I'm wow, that's so that's so good for you. I'm sure it's gonna happen for me someday. Yeah, it's no, totally, it's it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll I'll. I'll spend two hundred dollars on that dress on another bridesmaid dress. On another one, sure. I I just I'm just happy to be here. (laughs) Which is so everyone inside all the time. Pretty much. I mean, really, we can just acknowledge the truth. You posted a uh, a character that I really liked recently. That was uh, it was something like every uh like '90s rom com girl, like (laughs) or something like that. Like you're doing something with your hair, like and like there's just just great music playing in the background about and you kept talking about getting beers with the guys and going to the game and i was just yeah. like this is great this is perfect nailing it's classic it. i don't even know if that's a character but for, but maybe More that was just trope, like a spur you know? of the, like, a spur of the moment yeah he he my roommate was like co- literally just commenting on my outfit and then of course anytime you give a character an improv you're supposed to run with it that's called giving a gift so he gave me a gift and I ran with it. And it is true. Like, I love those rom-coms so much. I miss them. I feel like they, they're not around oh, anymore. Yeah, and it's like, always the same. Meet me in the quad. I think mm-hmm. tonight's the night. <laughs> Come over. Have a sleepover. Um, do yeah, you- movies like Summer Catch and uh, and She's All That and all that. Like, yeah. With Freddie Prince Jr. They're just fun. Who are, they are still together, Freddie Prince Jr. and... Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. She, she really? was a big good, heavy, good hit, heavy hitter. I'm, I'm so yeah, good happy. For them. No, it's, it's they have good. yet to break up. Cool. Yeah. Or or the or the reverse where you have to hide how happy you are because someone's broken up or whatever. Oh, they lost their job. Oh no. Oh. Oh, that's horrible. Really? I can't even. Oh, yeah. so you don't wait. So you don't have a 401k anymore? Hmm. Mm. Really? It's horrible. Okay. That's the worst. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Do you have any wigs remotely close to you? Yeah. Um, we're going to do this next segment. I love doing uh, this segment when uh, I have guests on who are comfortable doing characters and stuff uh we're gonna do this segment called wig okay you let's see you look like you could either be you could have a good job or you could be a complete slacker i'm not sure with this hairstyle that you have what exactly your character is yet what do do you think and you look like um, I think I do have a good job. Okay, you have a good job. Okay, cool. Um, I think that I am the boss's son, son. <laughs> yeah. uh, of a successful company that you work at, and I'm trying to come in, and uh, the boss really wants us to end up together. You clearly don't like me, but you're also trying to get ahead in in the business and try to make a good impression on the boss. So you're having to tolerate conversation with me. Mm-hmm. Right. Jennifer. Yes. Hey. Hi, hey. Max. Hey, um, you look good. Nice to uh, see you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You look, um, so what are you doing here? I just came by to see my dad real quick. And, um, you know, I was just picking up some product. Products. Yes. Um, I did deliver the products with the lobby. So she, they should be down there and your dad's busy until lunch. So you know, it's 930. Yes, I don't think so do you, you want to wait around for three hours. Uh, no, but do you, maybe uh, you can take a break. We can go get like some breakfast or something. What do you think? Um, that is so sweet. Um, I already ate. 
So oh, you already ate? No go because I'm okay. full. Do you want like a protein shake or something? Like there's like a place like right around the corner that I have a pretty good relationship with the dude. His name's Dylan. Right. I'm okay. I'll uh, no, um, politely decline that. I, I don't really know what to tell you. Um, curious why you decided to just wear boxer shorts into this office. Um, well, I figured, don't be rude. you know, my dad kind of owns but, a company and I kind of rolled right out of bed. So, you know, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants or my shorts, I guess. <laughs> oh, there's that laugh that we all love so much. <laughs> yep. I can smell the coffee that you had hey, do you, a second ago. Do you have Netflix, Jennifer? Yes. Do you want to um, Netflix and chill sometime or? Oh, that is so, so sweet. I mean, because we could so probably, much. I could probably talk to my dad maybe about, you know, like maybe I know that you've been trying to get that promotion for a while. Yes, that promotion is very important to me. It's going to help me take the next step to the next level. So for that reason, I will gladly, maybe we can watch it here in the office in neither one of our homes. How does uh, that sound? Sounds kind of kinky. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, right. I think broad daylight. If we can, if you can get here at 6 a.m. before my, Whoa, 6 a.m. before people get here. Okay, I know what you're saying. I'm picking up on what you're leaving behind. Well, <laughs> yes, there will be. They'll work. There will. Uh, that laugh, really? Love it. Love that laugh. There will be the people that, you know, the custodian. There will be people present, just not. Whoa, you like people to watch. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Watch party. I get it. Yeah. Watch, yeah. So we'll watch something, a cartoon, something light, something PG. Are you trying to tell me you want kids? Saying that, but I don't think I'm personally ready. I have a lot to focus on here at the at the office with your dad, who's watching me and rooting for me and I can't mess this up. So kids are later. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you later, Jennifer. Okay. Bye, Max. Thanks bye. for stopping in. Bye, 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 bye. You okay. Jeremiah Wonders is brought to you by ExpressVPN. There are tons of VPN providers out there. You probably heard of a couple of them on other podcasts, but ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market, and here's why. ExpressVPN doesn't log your data. Lots of really cheap or free VPNs make money by selling your data to ad companies. ExpressVPN developed a technology called Trusted Server that makes it impossible for their servers to log any of your info. Nice. Second is speed. ExpressVPN doesn't slow down your connection at all. Even when you connect to servers thousands of miles away, you can still stream HD quality videos with absolutely zero lag. The last thing that really sets ExpressVPN apart from other VPNs is how easy it is to use. Unlike other VPNs, you don't have to input or program anything. You just fire up the app and click one button to connect. It's so easy, even your grandparents can use it. You may wonder, what is a VPN? I'm lost here, am I? You said just set a VPN, a thousand dollars. What is that? VPN is a virtual private network that allows you to create a secure connection to another network over the internet. So basically, it can be used to access region-restricted websites, shield your browsing activity from prying eyes on public Wi-Fi, and more. Maybe you live in Canada and can't watch certain things in the U.S. With ExpressVPN, that's no longer a problem. Does that make sense? And it's not just me saying this. Wired, The Verge, CNET, and many other tech experts rate ExpressVPN as the number one VPN in the world. Use my link, expressvpn.com sax today, and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com sax. Visit expressvpn.com sax to learn more. Those uh -huh. two were kooky. <laughs> it's hard. In improv, you want to always yes and. Yeah. But she really wanted to decline you, so that was tricky. I know. Thank it was putting me up to the challenge. It was a tricky scene and through Zoom. Not an easy not an easy <laughs> feat by any means. Welcome to this podcast. Yeah, it's called The Gauntlet. <laughs> 
Yeah, she had a lot of nervous energy. He was funny. Um, you did Good now you or you do an impression of uh, somebody that I really like you, that I actually remember you doing in your JFL showcase audition. Yeah. You do a Kristen Stewart that is fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know how um, to respond to that, but what are you folding? All right. One second, Kristen. Okay. Um what um are you Batman? Hey, it's uh it's me Robert Batman. Pattinson. Oh. Yeah. Um thanks for It's me Robert stopping Pattinson. By. I, I'm the new Batman and you're Kristen Stewart. Yeah. I I I can see that. Um, congrats on all your success. I feel a little bit behind and, 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 and forgotten. And you look scary with that mask. For every new moon, there's a dark night. Yep. That's, that's so spot on. You're brilliant. And I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I, I pitched you as my love interest in the new Batman film. And they said, no. Yeah, I got replace with the other Kristen Kristen it, <laughs> I think I thought um, Kristen Wiig was uh, in the new Batman um, <laughs> do you still have feelings for me yes I do or no no I've got a lot of feelings I can't really tell because I can't see your face <laughs> Yeah, you can't you can't even really see my eyes either. I blocked them out. I have sharp I'm not eyes. Even sure if that's even you. No, it's me, Robert just Pattinson, trusting. I swear. I sparkle in the sunlight, but also in the dawn when the breaking of the of the twilight of the of the saga when it continues. Totally. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Maybe if I get a sequel, maybe I can get you in there. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's smart for us to work together, but I also know not to trust myself. So, yes. Sounds like a plan. Okay. <laughs> and the, the dissolve. When I do when I do these podcasts with friends and I'm putting on wigs or whatever, I I literally feel sometimes like we're like I'm slowly losing my mind and it's being filmed yeah. like while, while it's happening. I get that, especially like, when it's this. You're like I was just a part of that. I I'm I'm feeling exactly what you just said. I did not choose it. <laughs> But I t participated. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just appreciate friends being honest like that. Like, listen, that wasn't the card that I was hoping for, but it was the card that I happened to draw today. Okay? <laughs> like life. You just like have to life. take what comes. Uh, I want to ask a couple questions with this uh, segment called Fanning Out. Fanning Out. Questions from fans. I have a couple questions for you, yeah. and then we'll round it out with sax talk. A nice big old bow on this podcast. Um, this is an interesting question. Um, this comes from not even Jeff uh, on Instagram. After gaining fame and relevance and relevancy from Vine, and then it abruptly ending, was there any difficulty transitioning out of a social media based career, or did it open up more doors so you had more of a cushion to fall back on? It was heartbreaking. It was horrible. Um, I didn't really feel it until a year later, and I definitely had trouble um, getting the same amount of views on my uh, videos. I went from three million to, you know, I'm still at like six hundred something thousand on Instagram. Um, so it was it was really rough, really rough. And I don't think it like set in until a year later when I was like, oh, this is really hard to get views on my videos. Mm -hmm. Um, luckily I had a few viral videos on Facebook and so, 
you know, that's doing well and TikTok now. And um, that, that has like rekindled the, the love of like filming on the spot and posting on the spot. Um, I mean, it opened up the avenue for longer form stuff for sure, which is essentially what I wanted to kind of get into. So it's kind of good and bad. Yeah. Um, I was looking some stuff up on you and around 2016, you actually did a film with your dad that he directed. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And it was kind of cool. He to wrote see. and directed. That's so cool. He, he wrote and directed and his daughter starred in his film. Like that's a, that's just a cool story in general. Like did that happen? And also I was like, I was watching the trailer and it's a lot of other social media people that, that we know, um, Ry Dune and like, uh, and like Brandon Cavillo and some other guys, right? Mm -hmm. And Vincent Marcus, Marcus, John, Sonny Mabry. I think that's it of the Viners. Yeah. We had made that. My dad had come up with like a short film idea to, to just kind of help my acting career along to kind of participate and go, you know, let's, let's get some footage of you. This was before Vine. And then, so when Vine took off, he was like, screw this, let's turn it into a feature and have all the Viners in it. And then people will watch it. And unfortunately Vine died by the time the movie came out. Oh. So our precious, I, I know our precious idea of, um, I mean, that was partly, um, I don't want to say our fault because I wasn't in the pro I was only literally acting in it. Um, it just, the editing it just, it all took too long. And I mean, yeah, but, I really mean, just movie that. business in general, like all that stuff takes always longer than anybody thinks. Like even like when I shoot like a music video or certain sketches, like it always takes longer to edit and put together than I'd like it to. Yeah, totally. Oh, absolutely. And so that was kind of a, we hoped for this thing. Kind of got this thing. It's still sweet. It's been on Netflix a few years in a row, which is wonderful. I'll literally, you know, still get recognized from holiday breakup. And I'm like, you don't know me from the internet? You know me from that? All right. And they're like, we love it. I mean, there's some people that really love it. It's a really sweet film. It's also like, you know, for my ego, it's like, that was five years ago. I'm a way better actress now. <laughs> But I don't even know if that's true. But yeah, those those are some of the bigger other things that I was able to kind of to to do. You know, get back into auditioning when Vine kind of dipped. I was, yeah, other doors opened. I'd moved to and from New York. I lived in New York for two years and then came back. Was that a hard transition to go back and forth like that? No, I loved it. I'm born would... and raised here, so I'm very aware of here. And I just started feeling a little bit stagnant and like sure. I needed that kind of shift to like get uncomfortable I start feeling too comfortable. I don't like feeling that way. Yeah. I mean, I'm from Kansas. And so when so I moved to New York, I get that. Oh, what part? Kansas city, Overland park, Olathe. Yeah. That's where my um, mother's from. Oh really? So I have some fam. I have family out there. Yeah. What part of uh, Kansas city is she from? Oh, Olathe. Olathe. That's where, literally where my mom my, my lives mom's currently. That's where my half sister lives is Olathe, Kansas. And my, I think my mom, when she says, she says Kansas city. So well, literally yeah. both of those places. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's so awesome. I, vis I visit there all the time. Not all the time, like once a year. Do you get barbecue when you go back? Yeah, sometimes. What's your spot? It's good back barbecue. There. Oh, I don't even know the name of it. I, I don't, I shut my brain off and I just fall. You just, I'm not you, leading. I, I lose. Go. I don't. Yeah. I just right. Go. You're like, I'm chilling out. I don't want to, I don't want to take that in right now you guide me to wherever i'm sure yeah. I, i'd be curious what your family's barbecue of choice is the next time what you'll is have to, it you have to let me know for me uh it's this place called kansas city joe's uh another big one is gates there um kansas city joe's i've been to so good yeah because yeah. i was like maybe if he names it i'll know it second one i'm not so sure but yeah that that's, one, a, that's like yeah. more on the missouri side is the is gates but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. My uncle, my uncle, my uncle, and my grandpa live in Missouri. Okay. Well, I guess that's Kansas City, but like, um, not in Kansas City. More on the Missouri side. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Heck yeah. Um, at Zerv Vrez on Instagram, what's the first song that made you want to listen to an entire artist discography? What's a discography? Like their like full album, like their like all their work. 
basically like maybe an album or like all of their albums like have you so heard like a song again so basically if you heard a song like what was the first song that made you want to listen to an entire artist's discography so was there a song that you maybe heard once that you're like oh i i have to know way more about this artist now like like and if you were yeah. happen to remember that song because for me uh, when i read this mine is um Knights of Cydonia by Muse. I remember exactly where I was when I heard that song. I was literally on the way to school, like to when I was like on the football team and like exercising a lot. Like I heard it on the way to school and I'd never heard music like that in my life. Like there was just like heavy instrumental rock like that, like with like epic, like falsetto and stuff like that. I was like, what is this? And then like I couldn't find the name for like a week because back in the day, like you'd have to kind of wait a little bit longer to like find out like when they'd say it on the radio rather than just like put your phone up to it and just be like, oh, okay, this is what it is. Yeah. I have three answers for three generations. The first generation would be in sync. I heard I want you back because someone was doing it in a talent show and the song blew me away. And then I listened to that. Yes. album. Yes. So I was like, yes, you know, I was young. Second one in high school, I think it was Panic at the Disco. I'd heard a Time to Dance, which I loved, and then I just listened to that full album on repeat in my blue 2001 Jetta. Um, and then in my from 20s to 30s, I would say I really liked Ray Lamontang like a lot, and probably Jason Mraz in my high school years uh, as well. Mr. A to Z, I, I loved, um, but Ray Lamontang really really does it for me when I heard his song Empty. I was just like so moved by his lyrics and his soul. He's the one that, do you know Ray Lamontagne? Sings like trouble, 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 trouble. He has like such a, ra he has such a raspy, deep soul voice. I'll have so to look him, him up a little answers. bit more. Those are, those are great answers. They're yeah. In sync, I mean, I still listen to In sync. I still love JT. So good. I mean, it's just. I just love that that era of music so much. It's just fun and it yeah. brings back good memories. <laughs> like and it literally yeah. makes me want to like ding 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 ding. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes you want to pop and like makes you want to oh, do. Yeah. I'll I'll still you drive my around. Bad, babe. That's a good impression. That ain't no lie. No. Yeah. Yeah, I want to listen to it right now and just dance. Anyway. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh this one is um just a weird question wolf spencer asks have you ever farted so hard your ears popped no but i've peed so hard that my ears have popped um i uh farted so hard once that uh it hurt my tailbone and i was like what am i doing with my life <laughs> Yeah, and just by um, standing there doing it, or are you sitting I pushed, on your tailbone? I pushed way too hard. I don't know why. I was like, I gotta get this out now. I gotta do it, and like I pushed, and then I freaking actually Gage was there. I freaking sharded my shorts while we were on a shoot, like in the middle of the woods. I freaking sharded my shorts in the middle of the woods right after we had wrapped filming, and I was like. I was like, let's do one or two more takes, but I'm 95% sure I just sharted. And uh, we we finished shooting, and sure enough, went to the bathroom in Griffith Park, and it was a shart. And I had to clean myself up before I drove myself home in misery. Going for that laugh, though. I guess. I guess I was going for that laugh, and had it didn't to. pay up. I had to. And who's laughing now? Gage. That's who's laughing now. <laughs> 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 my producer that's who's cracking up because he looked at me like dude you're a grown man who just sharted on a on a shoot where you're a shirtless half deer half god creature in the middle of the woods you just pooped your pants and you also are complaining about the pain in your tailbone what is wrong with you and yeah, i looked at myself that's... that day and i said what i i tried to find a mirror but there were no mirrors because there are no mirrors in public bathrooms in Griffith Park. And I just had no. to look at myself in the black mirror that is my phone. And it was a sad day. <laughs> yeah. It's a very sad day. I hear you. <laughs> what a short show. Yep. Uh, this one comes from 
72 G. Wilson, if you could be anything, what would it be and why? If you could be anything. And I don't know if that means animal to you. I don't know if that means... It's a very, very cryptic question. If you could be anything. Um, I would be air so I could clean myself and cleanse myself quickly so the people could breathe better. Wow, I like that. <laughs> Last question. <laughs> this comes from Epic Good. Uh, are you happy? I found an Instagram account that the guy just asks people, are you happy? Their answers are eye-opening. 78% of the time, I'm happy. Yeah, I can't generally be like, yes. Yeah. It's always changing like air. How do you get yourself out of... I see what you did there. I saw you sneak that in. How, how do you get yourself out of your negative space? Because I have kind of... I have a couple, I guess, tricks that I do that I'll play on myself sometimes to, to try to get myself out of certain moods or something like that. Is there anything that you do that you kind of go back to that you're like, okay, this works for me to get my, my head in a good space. Yeah. Generally, if I'm not feeling good, it's because I'm probably being unkind to myself and I don't even know that. So like if I'm scrolling through Instagram, it's not necessarily that that's bad, but it's what I'm telling myself about that. So generally if I, if I start saying like, Oh, I suck, I'm not good enough and see, I'm not doing enough I have to throw my phone the F away and like literally give myself loving energy and be like, I love and approve of myself. And that always kind of makes me feel good and back to in a more loving state. Also just walking and listening to my favorite song um, gets me out of like on my feet and out of my head. I can look at nature. It's usually my head that's doing the stuff, not yeah. anything else. You know? Next time you go on a walk or a hike, Put on some Enya. I'll tell you what. She is a cleanser. You even put in the you even put a little bit of that the, that Irish in it. I like that. Is she Irish? Yeah. <laughs> I had to look I it up. I had like, no idea. I didn't either. And then I guess she's like one of the prides of Ireland, obviously. Is it Ireland obviously. or Scotland? Oop, that country's going to be mad. That's I gotta, very I gotta look different. It up. I know, they're two different. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Ireland. Oh, Jeremiah, you're messing it up. You love Enya. I forget. Gage, can we fact check that real quick? I usually don't ask you to fa fact check things, but I would look that up. Make sure she's from Ireland and not Scotland. Um, Irish. Yes! Not that there's anything wrong with being Scottish, but I just... Yes, there yeah. is. That's the guy that I married. He was Scottish. So oh, was then I got a thing or two to say about Scotland, man, and don't even get me started about the Scots. Ah! I actually love Scotland. The place I went to Edinburgh, oh, that was actually the one place that I would love to go again. I mean, I, there's so many great places, but Scotland's pretty dope. If you, and so is Ireland. I went to Ireland I, with my mom. I haven't been around. to Scotland. I've been to Ireland, and I loved, loved Ireland. Uh, but yeah, I hope to make it to Scotland someday. Yeah. Did you go to the cliff? Did I go to where? Moher. The cliffs of Moher, Mar in in Ireland. No, I didn't go to the cliffs. Oh my gosh, Ireland. there's these cliffs. It's the most amazing place in the world. You go and that's where the men drop their wives up these cliffs. Well, that's not true. I don't mean that might be true, but they're they just so beautiful. When, when they're not staying in the kitchen, we, we threaten to throw them off the cliffs. And most when they're not, do. When they're not they tending the think. sheep, we, uh, we say, off the cliff with you. Off the cliff with your head. Did you go to the Blarney Stone and kiss the cliffs? Cliff the cork, kiss the Blarney Stone. I went to. Did you just stay in Dublin? I just went to Dublin. Dublin. I just was. I was just in the Dublin. Were you area. performing? I was performing. Yes, I was performing. We did a we did a show, and it. Uh, uh, we ended up getting uh, some kind of food poisoning, probably in in uh, 
in Dublin because、uh, our next day in Manchester, we were sick as dogs. As dogs. Sick as dogs. Sick as dogs. You almost sound like Doubtfire. Oh, don't you know, dear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hell, hell, hell. Jack, it's、oh. not what it looks like, Jack. I don't have a dick. I mean, I do. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's really good. He, I've only performed one time at Iowa West, and it was right after Robin. So I was six months, six months before he passed. And we, I randomly did a show there for no reason. It doesn't make any sense why I was there, but I was with two other girls. And we were performing and we were waiting backstage, and the, the team comes off. And Robin's with Frank Coyote, he was there too. And Robin comes off and he's like, That was so much fun. And I just grabbed him. And I was like, I love you. And I hugged him. And I'm like, And we found out that he doesn't ever perform. He just like went in and performed. And it was insane. Like, if he would have waited, we would have, like, it doesn't make any sense other than I was glad to have met my hero before he passed because that was the worst day of my life. This is literally going to blow your mind right now. I was, there, with- I was there that night on the other side of the theater. So I was in the black box theater when Robin came out the back after he performed on that show. So probably moments after you talked with him. And he came out the back through the alleyway. I just gotten done doing my show upstairs that, I, that we were talking about earlier in the show. And、uh, I didn't want to ask him for a picture, even though I desperately wanted one. I just wanted a moment with him. And I just asked him,、uh, I go,、uh, how was it in there? And he,、uh, he got that Robin smile on his face, that smirk, and he goes, Oh, it was so much fucking fun. I haven't done that in so long. Yeah. It was good. And、yeah. I like, my heart like melted immediately. And I、yeah. was like, That's all that I wanted from him. Like, and then like he went, you know, he went off in the alley, like he got picked up by his car or whatever. And, And took off before people you know, started asking for tons of pictures and stuff. But he was so nice to everybody. Like, it was so, it's so weird that you were literally on the other wall and then he came through and walked. And like, literally everybody, like, after he left, they're like, he never does this. This, this, this. I don't even know the last time that like, he's come by. Like, he just did a drop in. He just wanted to do a drop in that night. Yeah, that's crazy. He just wanted to do a drop in. And it's even, and you it's, saw it's him also five seconds after he's gone. It's crazy、me. how adjacent you and I have been for years and not knowing it either. It's very, very bizarre. Yeah. That is very bizarre. Wow. Yeah, you were there and I was there and he was there and I felt so grateful. That's literally the only time that's only, the only time I performed, but I've only like, been in that vicinity like, a handful of times. And there's little, he was, you know, little, little guy, smaller、yeah. than, you know, in, in what we think. Yeah,、whatever. you always build them、and、up. That's exactly the, giants, yeah. Yeah, big headed <laughs> giants. And yeah, the same thing. That was, that was so much fun. It was so much fun. Like he like really needed that. Yeah, very cathartic.、Uh, we're going to close out with this last segment. It's called Sax Talk. Oh, Sax Talk. Man is going to share a story of a sexual encounter. It doesn't matter how innocent or graphic, as long as it's fun.、Uh, and I'm going to play some sweet, sweet sax underneath this. Sax it up. So, whenever you are ready. How long? So I、uh, know when to. It's whatever. Like, it's whatever. It doesn't have to be super long or anything.、Um, okay. Got it.、Uh, all right. So, whenever you're ready, I'll follow you. I was at the Sherman Oaks Galleria with this man. He was an older man. And、uh, we were sitting there across from each other at a table. And、uh, he told me that I was a bird, like a, a free bird, because he was older. And I think he didn't want me to think I was going to trap him. Or that he was going to trap me because he was older than me. Bigger, much bigger than me. He was a Green Beret. Marines. And、uh, I say, Well, I'm going to go.、And、he follows me to the car. We sit there in the car, and I'm like, 
what does he think is going to happen? He tells me he loves me. And I feel my whole body tingling. Like, this is crazy. I just stare wide-eyed because I feel, like, responsible. And luckily, he does get out of the car and leaves. And tells me to follow him to his house. So I do. Because I want some. So I go to his house after he tells me he loves me and that I'm a bird. We have sex. He takes my bracelet off and puts it on his bed. And after the sex, he decides to sage me with sage. He has me stand there, my arms open legs spread and he sages and blesses my body after having sex with him as if he's cleaning my aura or whatever and then it was that night that I decided I never want to see him again not because of the sage but because the next day he left me four four minute messages like at the end of four minutes he decided that wasn't enough time so he called back and said, hey, it cut me off again and left four, four minute messages. <laughs> and that's when I decided the sex just wasn't good enough for me to continue talking to this man. some uh, strong advice for any of you thirsty fellas out there that even if you <laughs> had a good night before don't blow it the next day by not being cool and overplaying your hand seriously and we don't need to hear you say that you love us it's, we don't need it like don't just like say you love us the day first week just hold off it's a, it's, just pump uh, the brakes a little bit, right? Just chill, man. Chill. Hey, chill. <laughs> I came, you came, we all came. It's cool, man. <laughs> Doesn't need to be more than that, buddy. Listen, you got uh, your rocks off. I got mine off, all right? I'm chill. Don't worry about it. You don't have to text me. You don't have to call me the next day. I'm a grown woman. I can handle myself. Absolutely. But if three days have gone by and you haven't, then that's a no no. Make that's sure no, you at no. least get in that three day window. <laughs> we will hunt you down and kill you like a carcass on the side of the road. Yes, we will. Absolutely. Well, man, and thank you so much for doing this podcast. I know uh, it was uh, uh, strange at times, to say the least. Uh, and I ask a lot of my guests, and I appreciate you. Uh, you know, yes, ending everything I threw at you today. And is there anything that you want to plug or anything that uh, you're excited about coming up? Yeah, um, definitely. You know, if you're interested in any of those things that we talked about, um, definitely get my book, Funny How It Works Out. I have a podcast, um, a newer podcast called uh, Serious But Funny. And go have a listen. And if you want to follow and laugh, you can find me at TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook at Men and Matthews, one N, one T. Heck yeah, check it out. I highly, uh, highly advise my listeners or viewers to go uh, check out those pages. Uh, you post stuff all the time that cracks me up. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time today. And I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, pal. I hope to see you soon. Yeah, you too, Jeremiah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Bye. Bye.